Hello and welcome to Wicked Craftworks. It is September 20th, 2023. It is basically Halloween Eve and I could not find any cauldrons or anything anywhere. And well, anything like that anywhere. So I made a couple. I made a nice big one and I made a semi big one. And the teepee it hangs from. And I also made the smoldering fire pits that go underneath them. And I'm going to show you how I did it and I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe and um, well let's get to it you couldn't find a cauldron either could you well I'm gonna make a couple of them using a couple of different methods and we're gonna see how they turn out together alrighty so what I got for the smaller one this is a 10 inch pot and the bigger one, this is a 15 inch pot. They measure from here to here. And I got those at Lowe's. Everything's on clearance because it's September and you know, blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to need for <clears throat> um, the little one is uh, we get some hot glue, scissors, box cutter, you know, that for obvious reasons. Um, and one of the steps you're going to want to take some cardboard. And I cut it into pieces that look like this. So you can um, make that rounded shape for the body of it. You know, I have, a, this is the 10 inch pot. I have about, I cut about 30 of these and then I got annoyed with it. So I'm going to hope that, you know, that that works out. If not, I'll cut more. Um, and I'm going to start it by doing it this way. I'm going to here and then put one here or on this side and then then here and here you know try to keep it even and if I need more I'll get more uh, or I'll make more and um, I have this little guy right here from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take him all apart because I'm going to use these skulls to put on the sides here like one on this side and one on that side and um, I want a lip for this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy apart, I was going to take him apart anyway, but they have mini um, pool noodles around the structure on the inside of it, and um, I'm going to, so I'm going to completely dismantle him, and I'll use all of this stuff, you know, I'll use this for like, you know, like witches or other thing, monsters that I'm going to make. These will go in the cauldrons. These will go in the cauldron or the fire pit that I'm going to make for it, which will also be in this video. And so all these parts will get used, so that's great. Um, <clears throat> and so then this, once these are all on here, I'm going to wrap it with this just to make the body of it. And then I was thinking in order to help with, like, the striations and to make it look like it's not wrapped in tape, I'm going to uh, decoupage some black napkins all around it using uh, Mod Podge mixed with a little bit of water, um, kind of like, you know, like a paper mache sort of thing. And once this dries, it dries clear, um, it'll seal it. But I have this stuff from camping section. Um, I don't really, I think it was like $10 at Walmart. And that will seal it. This is stuff that they use for um, sealing stuff at, like um, like when you're in camping. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, to keep you like your tent and everything inside dry. And I got these at Walmart. It's black spray paint. They're like uh, like two something a can. This was not, this was almost seven dollars. They didn't have any of the cheap stuff in the red. For the fire pit, I got a couple of foam insulating thingies uh, um, and I will probably need more at some point but we'll see because uh, the fire pit that I'm making for this one is really little so I might not need more but if we do we'll just get more and I found these at a thrift store um, in the area that I love to go to for my crafty supplies and they're flicker lights and I thought that would go good with the flame uh, for the for the little fire pit underneath and these are just going to, like, you know, this go in the fire pit or in the cauldron. I get some, like, little goodies. These are all from the Dollar Tree. Um, 
and I had this idea because I didn't want to spend like a hundred dollars on a fog maker. I have this little tiny thing from the Dollar Tree. So in five dollars, it's a little mini mist maker cauldron. What I'm going to do with that is when I'm done making this thing, um, which this is, I think, a perfect shape. Um, so I, I don't have to do a lot of altering to its um, its body or anything. I am going to spray paint it. Um, I couldn't find any of the craft foam thingies I want to put right here, but I'm going to keep looking, and I can attach them at any point, I think. And I'm going to fill this space probably with some uh, foam or any anything that, that that's like just crap that you can just throw in there to fill the space and then have like a like a little platform a little higher. And I'm going to put this in it and use that as the mist maker. And I'll probably put, I'm not sure if this has, oh, color changing LED. Okay, so this will have colors in it and it'll mist. So I don't have to really put lights in here if I don't want to, but I probably will because I'm extra. And um, you want lots of cardboard because for the fire pit, you want to put this on the floor and put this on it or that one, whichever one you're doing and um, cut a round circle that way you just have like a platform and, and that and then that way you know you put the pot in the middle of it you get the spray foam sprayed around it with the lights and then more spray foam and then um, um, what do you call it? and then and then you, you know you have your shape and you have a base and then um, before it dries you pull the cauldron or you know the pot off so it doesn't dry to it so it's like a, its own separate little piece and, um, you know, all the stuff I got at the Dollar Tree or um, clearance at Lowe's, like the gardening stuff. I'm also going to do the TP thing uh, because Lowe's had one left. It is um, a five-prong um, TP sort of thing for a garden, but it's wood and it's really strong. And I'm going to use that to make the TP thing because I'm going I'm to have this one be, um, you know, on... Um, hanging from the stuff, uh, from the, from the teepee. Um, and so I have to put that together and spray paint it and all that stuff. But so this is all stuff and I'll have a list of all the supplies you're going to need or that I ended up using or did, um, um, in the, um, the comment sections below. And, um, well, let's, let's get to it and see how it all turns out. I have to do it in steps because I'm using my cell phone and um, I'm one-handed. So first things first, get you some coffee and um, check the uh, supply list and make sure you have everything and um, let's get started. Leave at least one of these available so you can work wires in and out if you need to. All right, you're going to spray it on the edge. And press it and hold it for a moment. It dries pretty quick. And you're going to do this about 30 times or however many times you have these uh, cut out cardboard pieces. But before you do that, please like this video and maybe subscribe to my channel. That would be totally awesome. Okay, so there we have it. All those little crescent pieces have been glued to the side. And if at any point you're thinking, you know, you have five or six of these left, Oh, it looks good enough. No, resist that urge because the more of these you have on there, the more it's going to contribute to the shape that you want it to be in. 
So the next step is I'm going to take this tape and wrap it all around in big pieces. And um, I only have one hand and a little bit of help from one of my youngins. So I'm going to um, get as much of that as I can on camera so you can just see me doing it. And then, um, and then we will check it out soon after. All right. Now, for the pieces that go around like the middle, they can be really big, but when you're doing the curve on the top, and then the this portion, you want the pieces to be like a little smaller, so they're not going all over the place. You want it to just, um, you know, cover all the way around, and you don't want any waste, so you want, you know, big pieces for the middle, but then little pieces for up on these sections, that section at the top and bottom. Now, if this is going to be a hanging cauldron, you're going to want to tape over the bottom side of it too. Mine is, so I'm going to cover the whole thing because it's going to be hanging and you want it to be, you know, uniform and stuff. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so here it is. This is what it's going to look like. You know, it's not, you know, like anywhere near done yet, but it's got its shape and, you know, it's kind of like that, you know, that witchy cauldron. This is where you would do things like um, cut holes through the tape right there so you have space to um, string um, any wires through if you need it. Um, I'm not putting anything in here. I don't think I was going to use some battery operated lights because it's a small one and um, it's going to hang. So um, the wires that I'll need will be for the fire pit that I'm going to put underneath. So I don't really need those there, but I wanted to leave one open and maybe cut a little bit more right there in case you need the extra space. But that way it's still hidden because, you know, it's covered right there. But, you know, you can cut right through it or, um, you know, just work the tape around it so it's, it's exposed so you can get in and out if you need it. Now, the next thing is for the rim. Now, if this might actually just be good enough the way it is, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decoupage or um, paper mache over this just to, you know, give it more uh, shape and all that stuff. Um, but I can't find any pool noodles. Oddly enough, so, but these little things, these little hangy things at like Dollar Tree have, um, you know, um, like mini pool noodles. And I would just take a box cutter and slice it down, right, and then work it over the rim. And I'm going to do that, um, but I don't have my cameraman, so I'm going to have to just, you know, I'm going to take a box cutter. Um, well, I'm going to need um, some uh, wire cutters, and I'm going to cut the wire and then um, then, then slice down the side, because you're going to have to do that anyway to get it over the edge. 
And I am going to use these hands, the skull, the creepy cloth, and other stuff. So none of this is going to go to waste, but that's my next step. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and that will show you the results. Now, you see, I didn't even need the box cutter. Those cut really easy, which is slipping the scissors right, you're know, right, right under it like that, and they cut right off. And they fit on here really perfect. Um, I got two of those skeletons that I took that from, and I'm going to need, see, I got one, I got the two arms from one, so, and it covered half of it, so I'm going to need all four. So that's how much you're going to need for this 10-inch gardening pot. You're going to need these guys from the Dollar Tree. You need those. They're like a dollar twenty-five or something. And um, and these wires in here, they cut very easily with a pair of those. So that was good. That was not a terrible thing. So I'm going to take these back off. I was just fitting them. I was going to take these back off, and I'm going to glue them on. And then then that, that step is complete. And then um, we will get on to how to do the... Um, the decoupage part. Also, be careful with the hot gluing part because these are very, very like, um, you know, melty. You know, I got a little tear right there from the hot glue, but I mean, that'll be fine because I'm we're going to decoupage over it so that's going to be covered and you know that doesn't have to be perfect either you know this is a scary halloween prop so you know little mistakes like that are not a big deal but you know so put it on the rim and um and then just like wait like 10 seconds or fan it a little bit so it's not you know piping hot that it's melting stuff all right so it's starting to come together there's the shape you know, you can see it. This is better than just leaving it because now it has that, you know, that witchy cauldron thingy. Now, this is just a, 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 a pla basic little plastic um, pot, so you can um, poke through it. Because right now, before you start, like, decoupaging um, or, you know, paper mache the outside, you want to get three holes in it so you can put your hangy hooks you know, and you want three, because uh, I, you know, I don't know, I guess that's what you do. So we're going to do three, and I was able to do it uh, really easy, just kind of poking it like this and like that, and it went right through, because uh, this is not like heavily reinforced or anything. This is just a basic, one of those basic black pots. I actually bought one thinking, oh, I can make this into a cauldron, because I can't find any, and it turned out I had three of these anyway because I garden, and it was just, you know, it's just a basic, you know, black pot, you know, so you may even have all that, and um, all of this stuff, this is just um, cardboard that um, I got from a box from things that were delivered to me um, that I got in the mail, and I kind of keep them around for little projects like this. So, um, you know, because I don't like waste, I don't want to throw it away, you know, it's still good, just because I used it once doesn't mean that, it, you know, you can throw it away. So I, you know, I keep them for little projects like this, and that's how I got all of this. So now I have this, it's already looking pretty cool, so remember to save your cardboard, your cardboard boxes and stuff, so you can make really cool things like this. Alright, so I'm going to put the holes in there, um, make sure you cut it so, you know, whatever hooks you're going to use will fit and then you know chains and then you'll need another hook for the top to um, link the top of the three chains together and chain is actually especially for like you know little chain um, you know that it's really cheap to get either on Amazon or a hardware store or whatever I, I got mine from a hardware store and it was like a dollar a like a foot or two or whatever so you know that's not going to that's not a huge expense so um, and I had those anyway be from um, my booth at the farmers market so um, you know so just time before you know when you're going through um, you know your uh, list of things that you're going to need um, you know poke around make sure that you know 
you don't already have some of it, so you don't go buy it unnecessarily. I had a couple of these from old projects. I make um, cardboard um, coffins. Um, I've made those for the past couple of years. I actually have another video uh, tutorial on how to do that. So if you can all, you know, go through my videos and uh, you can check that one out too. Um, and it's pretty easy and they come out really super cool. So here we go. So now I'm going to put the other two holes in. And then I'm going to start um, doing the uh, Mod Podge stuff, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. Okay, <clears throat> so this is how, you know, that looks. Those are the hooks that I'm using, and the hole was really easy to puncture to get them in there. So, okay, clear there. There you go. That works. So right now we're going to start doing the outside decoupage, and for what I did, or what I'm doing, is I have um, just black napkins. And I am going to use some Mod Podge. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of water. And that's what I'm going to paint the napkins onto the body with. I need to get some more. Let's do that. Also, I'm going to uh, do it the paper mache away as well. So I've got Mod Podge, flour, and water. I got about a third a cup, a third of a cup of Mod Podge, and a third of a cup of flour, and about about two cups of water. You want it to be, it's good, it should be runny, you know, and all of the flour dissolved, of course. And when it dries, it'll be pretty waterproof. I still, I'm still going to use the sealant on it just in case. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a paintbrush and start painting around the side, and then we're going to stick a um, unfolded napkin. And if it's two layer, you want to peel it so it's one layer. And um, it'll cover um, a pretty decent size, so this step won't actually take too long. And um, and if you want to do it this way, which I'm going to do, I'm going to take these hooks out for now and turn it upside down and do it that way. And that is going to take some time to dry, So and it's going to take about a day, so I'm going to have to finish this tomorrow. I'm going to start doing it now, and I'm going to give it a day to uh, dry. And you want to give it, like, if you're going to do multiple layers... You want to give it several hours to dry and because you want to decoupage the the top rim as well um, you're gonna give you're gonna, you're gonna do the body of it first and then you're gonna and then you're gonna do this part last and um, you want to um, do a couple layers just to you know make it strong and sturdy and to help with the shape you know, because um, this step is going to hide some of the, a lot of the rungs that you see around on the side. And then um, once it's dry, uh, we can do, we can start doing all the other fun stuff. So here we go. So I'm going to show you some of me doing uh, this next step. And then once it's dry, I'm going to continue. Now, when you're putting, you, you paint it on, and then you put the napkin on top of it, kind of go like this. Be careful, because it gets flimsy, and it'll rip like this. That's not a huge deal, but um, 
you know, I don't want it to clump up and stuff. So I could just um, put another one right over it and it won't be a huge deal, but just uh, be careful of that. You know, that way, you know, we're not wasting or clumping or, you know, yeah, that's better. That'll, that'll work better. You know, you could what you could do it a little bit, but as soon as it gets saturated, it's going to start tearing. And we don't want that. So this method right here works a lot better. You can see the napkin covers a huge area, so this step isn't actually going to take as long as if you were cutting it into small pieces, like you would for a paper mache project. So. This works better. So just be careful when you're working your way around. Make sure that you are getting it everywhere though, because you don't want any part of it to not be sealed, because then it won't be very waterproof and you won't be able to have it outside. You want to paint this with the gluey stuff and then put the napkin over it and then you know like that so you don't tear it you know you want to get those bits down and then you're going to let it dry and then you're going to do another layer Just keep layering, just keep layering, get up into that little crevice. Layers and layers. Yeah, just keep layering. Sit it out in the sun, it'll dry in like an hour. And then you can do more layers and more layers. However many layers you think is right, it'll have to be textured is good you know but just keep going and going until you think it's right remember to do this pep, 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 pep. that way we don't tear up any of the tissue the first layer you have to be the most delicate but after you don't have to worry about it as much Alrighty, this looks like it's all done, all nice and dry. Oh, and the inside's plastic, so you don't really have to worry about it being waterproof. But, yep, yeah. alrighty, on to the next one. Okay, also, um, if you're going to um, leave one of these holes open for wiring, uh, you want to try to insulate it. So it does, if it rains, and this is not under like a covered porch or whatever, um, if, it, if it's going to get any rain in here, you don't want the rain getting into these holes and into the body of it, and then it'll just end up soaking the layers of cardboard that's in there. So um, you could like, kind of like get a hole going right there so you can feed wires through it if you need to, but I'm going to use uh, battery-operated wires so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
decoupage or paper mache or whatever. Do some kind of sealant thing to, to block those off. And or um, I'm just going to put it on my covered porch, you know, because it gets windy around here, too. And um, this is the reason I don't put any uh, tombstones out usually is because the wind just ends up blowing them away. So I'm going to probably have this on my covered porch, so I might not even bother, but um, that's just something to think about if you're going to leave, if you're going to utilize these holes, these drainage holes on the bottom. But um, if not, that's certainly something to think about. You either want to plug them up, block them off, or something and seal them so if, if it rains where you are, you don't want it filling up and ruining it from the inside out. Okay, so you know plan for that okay so this one is going to be easier it's bigger it's already the shape that i want so i'm just going to be like painting it and adding some embellishments to it but i first want to get the um cardboard uh circular thing that i'm going to use to put the um the foam fire pit thing um, and I want a base for it, so I'm going to make a circle and cut it out. And then um, after we're done doing this cauldron, we're going to start doing the fire pit. But I first want to get the cutout for it before I start painting and all that stuff. I also found these uh, little terracotta plants like legs thingies you know that um i thought if i attached them like glued them on i thought it would give it a more cauldrony sort of look so i'm gonna go with that i'm gonna glue these on and then we'll move on to the next step all righty so it's time to spray paint and um i have it outside on just an old yucky sheet that i use as like a canvas or whatever or a drop cloth and um I'm going to spray paint so you want to do this part outside or in a well ventilated area it's because uh even if you're outside this stuff flies right up into your face and it's not fun to breathe in so I'm going to mask up and then we're going to start this is just the regular stuff i tested a small spot and it sticks Sometimes if you get like a really smooth plastic, it'll um, just kind of drip off and you want to do it like in spurts like this. Maybe wear a glove so you don't get all yucky like that. But this works better when you do it like this, just like in small spurts. Probably just do the underside after this one dries and I'll just get like a little bit like on the bottom part afterwards after this dries so I'm gonna do that and uh, we'll come back when it's all dry and ready for the next step One thing, I was going to put these on like this after, after I painted it so they'd stand out more. But I think what I'm going to do, I mean, this is nice and dry. It didn't take long. I did, um, I did two coats, um, one with it upright first like this, and then I turned it, let it dry, and then I turned it upside down, and I did the feet and did all around again because, um, you know, some of the original covering can be seen you know so i just got into the grooves and striations i saw so i had i did that upside down and then i turned it back up and did another just to make sure that it was covered that only took about like with the drying times about two hours so it's not that bad but what i think i'm going to do um this is those um this is the skull from that um dollar tree 
scary hangy ghost thing and um, the one that I took the mini pipe cleaners off and stuff and I just kind of took it apart I cut off the back and you know enough to shape it the way I wanted to and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on the side here and then I'm going to put the other one on the other side and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to um, spray paint it and then maybe dry, dry, dry brush over it so we're going to go ahead and do that and see how it looks Okay, so I put hot glue around the edges and be careful, hot glue is really hot. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is uh, make some dribbles around the edge, you know, to help uh, reinforce it a little bit. But also, um, you know, just for added fun effects, maybe like paint it red so it's like it's bleeding around the edges and, you know, spooky things. That's holding pretty well. Alrighty. And the second one, you want to make sure that they line up evenly so it's like one right on the other side of the other, you know, so it's even and not weird. You could get like a bunch of these and line the entire circumference there. And that would be cool too. Make it nice and scary and spooky, maybe, um, you know, I'm going to do the thing with the, the drippy glue, make it look like it's bleeding around the edges there. I might get more and add on to it because I kind of like that idea. It's just I only got two to begin with because it wasn't my initial plan. But, you know, it's trial and error. You just keep doing stuff and going about it and then making changes and stuff along the way because, you know, that's how you do it. Yeah, I'm going to make like it's bleeding right there. So that'll come out and like drippy a little bit. Yes. I'm going to do that to the other side too. Make it like whoa, spooky. Let it naturally drip. If you're using like a plastic table, this will just drip onto the table and dry and you can peel it right off. Uh, otherwise, do this over some cardboard or whatever so you don't mess up any surfaces. So we're going to let that dry. I'm going to spray paint over it and then probably dry brush to make it nice and spooky. Alrighty, that looks good. I'm going to use this light set because it's for the small fire pit because there's only 10 lights and it's you know they get the flickery and you know I think it'll look really cute I got um, a big set for the big cauldron that one I'm waiting for the spray paint to dry so we're gonna do this one first and see how that so I'm gonna pull it out of the box and add it to the foam and go from there Okay, so I tested them, and they work. They're beautiful. And we're just going to strew them about here. And then you put on another layer of the foam. And then you put on the sticks. And you want to hang that out there. Okay. Oh, I don't like the way that looks. Well, that looks kind of weird. Yuck. Gooey. Oh, I ruined that one. All right. Okay, so I think that's how it's supposed to go. Okay, 
I'm gonna rearrange this. I need both my hands. I'll be right back. That was way messier than I thought it was gonna be. You're probably going to need mm, at least three of these, depending on how big your fire is going to be. But yeah, this is messy and yucky. I'm trying to hide the wires without completely covering the bulbs. And then you wait a couple of minutes and then place all of your other little goodies. This stuff is sticky, so wear gloves and try not to get any on you. It's yucky. Alrighty, so it's all nice and dry. It's kind of poofy. It feels like it's kind of hollow, but it's still like really nice and lightweight. So, um, so again, you take your circular piece of cardboard and um, you spray it with a layer of foam and then you layer your lights in it after you wait a couple of minutes so it doesn't you know do what it you know melt it or whatever you just wait a couple of minutes and so it's nice and tacky I think I did it a little too soon so it was kind of messy at first so wait the three minutes and then lay out your lights and then put on another layer of the foam and then add like you know sticks and this is all this is all Dollar Tree stuff you know so it's not a big deal now um, and I tested the lights they still work and um, I'm going to first spray paint this with a little um, with some red and it's the kind of red that will bond to plastic and then after that, I will either dry brush or dab it or something with black. So it's got like a red and black because it's supposed to be smoldering and I don't want to put too much black and then mess it up or anything. So I'm going to put a layer of red, probably not completely cover it, but uh, just enough so um, it'll show through some of the uh, gaps in, that I'm going to leave with the black so here we go remember um, gloves mask all that see very quick that's just um, you know because I'm gonna use this for another project and um, so I need some but that is perfect that is a really nice bright looking red and then I'm going to go over, uh, once it's dry, I'm going to go over it with black. And so it'll have that nice char look. And I may do some dry brushing to add some extra accents and make it extra fancy. Alrighty, um, so we'll come back.
I think that's perfect. Okay, here it is. It's all dry. And, you know, it's kind of got the smoldery black and red. And we're going to plug it in just to test it. And it's still kind of light out, so you might not see it. But, yeah, you got, I got the lights under there. That came out really good. It's nice and smoldery. This is the one that's going to go underneath the hanging cauldron. So, now we're just going to make the big one. All right, now for the big one, you want to get your cauldron in uh, either a bag or something that'll cover it so the foam don't stick to it. And cut out, you know, a big round um, cardboard piece or wood or whatever you want to use. And then just spray around in one layer and then get the, uh, the lights on and then spray around in another layer and get all like these little accents and stuff on and then you're going to wait for it to dry you're going to wait for it to dry and then you're going to add the paint and that'll make it awesome this stuff is yucky you're going to need about two or three cans. I got around once with one can. I may still need another. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh, oh. All right, but I got, you know, I just uh, sh spread the lights around. And then I'm going to do another coat and then stick all these goodies in it and then let it dry before we paint. Alrighty, so I got I did this with two cans and I got all the way around it and um, I strung the lights around like around it went around about twice and then I used another can to top it all off and I waited a couple minutes and now you're gonna like stick your goodies out of it like you know things that you want to like ooh, scary things where do I want to put that oh, right there and then like, you know, some sticks, you know, just to give it the illusion, you know, spooky things. You know, bones, uh, maybe like some little skulls and sticks and maybe like some rats or whatever. Ugh, it's like working with melted marshmallow. It's gross. It sticks to everything. So if you have long hair, you better tie it up. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna come back and spray paint it. I'm going to do a light uh, red coat, kind of like I did with the other one, and then go over that a little bit with black and then go over that again. I'm gonna alternate lightly coating with red and black until I get that desired smoldered look. And then I will probably dry brush a little bit uh, just to you know um, illuminate the, the bones a little bit so I'm, I'm gonna go inside and get another bone or two um, but yeah we'll be back to paint alrighty so now it's nice dry it's kind of like styrofoamy and it's good so I'm gonna do red coat and then a black coat over it until I get my desired look. I got the kind that sticks to plastic.
think it's pretty perfect. I'll probably touch up a little bit where there's some white right there, you know, around the edges. But I don't want to coat it too much in one color. So I'm going to just going to like that. And then, and then the finish line. I have that one little thing to do where I have the um, teepee trellis that I got from the garden center that I'm going to hang the smaller cauldron from. I just have to, it's pine so I have to paint it. Okay. All right, so that looks really good. And even though I'm going to have this on my covered porch, uh, just in case, you know, because that's cardboard, I am going to spray this uh, silicone cover stuff. Comes out in a fine mist. Just to uh, protect it a little bit from the elements. stinky so you know wear a um a mask but yeah i just like just to help this is the first time i've ever done this um i didn't do a practice run or anything i just gonna wing it and i'm winging it and it's going pretty well <clears throat> I learned a couple little things along the way so the next time i go to do it it's going to be better and um you know, for a first time, it wasn't terrible. So, now, you can do it, and it'll, you know, for your first time, and, you know, watch this first, and then, you know, maybe, uh, you know, figure a thing out or two before uh, you go at it, and um, it'll probably go a lot smoother for you. And um, these um, smoldering pits um, didn't, really take very long uh, the the foam that dries in like 15 or 20 minutes so um, you know and that comes it came out really good you know I just kept spraying black over red over black over red to, until it got to like a smoldery look that I liked and um, but before you paint it and you start doing that um, I would test the lights first before you put the lights on and then once the foam dries around the lights I would test the lights again just to be sure so we're gonna wait for this seal stuff to dry and then we're gonna start putting things together and here it is it came out really awesome um, it, it illuminates uh, pretty well I think and um, there we go. Uh, that is the mister from uh, Dollar Tree. It was only like $5, but you do need a 5 volt um, adapter. That thingy right there. That way you can plug it in because it's, um, hooked, it's uh, hooked up with a USB thingy. And I got this little one lined with a black shopping bag. Um, I actually had a cute idea that it worked, but um, one of my kids got a hold of it, and you know how they are. But um, uh, one of those little um, shower caps actually fits around the rim really perfectly and will completely shield the inside from being rained in if you were concerned about that. And I would get two clear ones. That way you could put one on and then put like a light set in there and just like rest it in there kind of like a hammock. And then put the other one over it to protect it from rain so the inside and the lights in it will be protected from the rain so i thought that was a really cute idea and um well this is it and it came out really cute if you followed along uh let us know in the comments how it came out or if you have um any other suggestions um uh, if you liked this video um Please um, like it, of course, and then uh, maybe subscribe. That would be awesome. And um, check back regularly because I'm going to be doing all kinds of 
mostly Halloween probably until I get more into the Christmas season for my shop, which is www.wickedcraftworks.com. I am I have an Etsy shop that um, I make all kinds of wreaths and holiday decorations and all that stuff. And well, I hope you enjoyed this, and um, we'll see you next time.